Hello. Happy Monday. Welcome. I am so excited today to hop on here to talk about pricing because I know this is a big pain point for photographers and probably one of the biggest questions, the most popular questions I get in our group is, help, what should I charge? Um, what do you guys think about this? Can we talk about pricing? And um, I have some really uh, specific opinions about pricing. <laughs> and I'm just gonna tell you, be honest with you today and, and tell it like it is, what I believe in when it comes to pricing. I actually have five tips for you that I jotted down here um, that I'm, I'm hoping will help you when it comes to pricing yourself as a brand photographer. Um, and the first thing I wanna talk about a lot on this live, a big theme is to stop crowdsourcing your pricing. And what I mean by that is when you go into a Facebook group and you post and you say, hey, can someone help me out with pricing? Like, what should I charge? No, stop doing that, okay? <laughs> That's really, really dangerous for you and the growth of your business to ask other people what to charge. And one thing I'm really careful about as a business coach and a mentor for photographers is not telling you what to charge because pricing is such an individual thing. As photographers, as artists, um, as service providers, we can charge $100 for our brand photography or we can charge a million. It's completely up to you what you charge. Um, I always think of like Picasso. He was out there and he wasn't one of, Picasso wasn't one of those artists who, um, who didn't get famous and make a lot of money until after he died. Picasso actually, he made a lot of money while he was alive and he charged a lot for his great work. Um, and you know, what made Picasso's paintings a million, not a million, I don't know thousands and thousands of times better or more expensive than another artist painting was just his mindset and his belief in himself, his story, the heart and soul that he poured into his work. And for that, we can charge anything. But I am gonna give you some strategy in this video, so keep watching. Um, but the first thing I wanna do is, you know, just say to stop crowdsourcing because when you are trying to charge based on an average in your market or you're trying to ask other photographers what they charge, in like a Facebook community like this, you're asking the average. You're asking someone who's average. So unfortunately, the average photographer in our world are not running a thriving business. They're not making six figures or even $50,000 a year doing what they love. They're not even doing it full time. So you're asking people to tell you what to charge who aren't even doing this work full time. They don't even have a legit sustainable full time business. And so that's problem number one, is that you're asking the average to tell you what to charge, or you're looking around at your market in your area, what other people charge, and you're, you're trying to average yourself in there. But the average photographer is not doing well, like unfortunately, and I wanna change that. That's why we have this group. So let me know, be honest, because I've done it. When I first started out in, as a wedding photographer, I would look at other photographers' websites. I would see what they were charging on Thumbtack in different places. And then I would say, hmm, okay, I gotta like fit myself in this box somewhere based on what they're charging. Have you done that? If you have, just say hello if you're watching and just call yourself out. Like, yes, I've totally done that. I'm guilty, <laughs> I've done it. Um, and that's not the way to be successful is to charge based on the average because the average person in your area, the average photographer is not successful. They do not have a full-time sustainable thriving business. So for you to charge based on that is there's, that's a problem right there. Okay. Another reason to stop crowdsourcing. So I actually heard, um, this crowdsourcing idea was inspired by Amanda Francis, her podcast. If you listen to it, let me know. Let me know if you love Amanda Francis or if you hate her. She's kind of like either loved or hated. I freaking love her. She talks about money mindset and I love her podcast. And I have a quote from her. She said, feeling out of integrity creates a kink in your energy. It's like poison. So what she's talking about is feeling out of integrity with your pricing. And this is why nobody can tell you what to charge. If you're charging too little for your service or if you're charging too much 
from what you feel within is is the right amount for you to be charging right now it's 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 gonna be disconnected there's gonna be a kink in your energy your clients are gonna feel it you're either too cheap you're too expensive and they're gonna feel that from you that you're not charging what you are worth your vibrational like frequency and match energetically and um so that's really important you have to charge what feels good to you no one else should be telling you what to charge so right now i would love it if like i never get another post in this group of what should i charge <laughs> um because it's just not it's not healthy for you it's not helping you to ask other people what to charge um so just decide i would say i would start with picking a number that feels good to you something that maybe is a little exciting to you and you're like oh my gosh i would love to make this much money on a brand shoot and it's kind of stretching you a little bit to show up and give 100% to your clients. That's really important because <clears throat> if you're not charging enough, you're not gonna deliver your best work. You know, if you're hustling and you have a full-time job and you're a mom or a dad and then you're charging, oh, here, I'll give you a deal on your photography and you're, you're burning yourself out, you're tired, how are you gonna show up and give your very best work to every single client? You're not. So you really need to charge a price that allows you to do that. Um, <clears throat> and so let's move on to number two tip I have, which is, as far as finding your sweet spot with pricing, I want you to remember that pricing too cheap will repel high-end clients. So if you're someone who wants to build a high-end brand photography business, um, you want to charge thousands of dollars for a photo shoot with you, then you need to be charging enough money to attract those people. So I have a story about this. Last week, one of my clients, one of my brand clients coming up, her shoots in a couple weeks, she reached out to me and she asked me, hey, do you have any recommendations for videographers? I, I think I want to add video to my photo shoot day. Could that be possible? Because she's already we're running a beautiful location and space for it. And I said, yeah, that's amazing. I would love to you know, have you add that on? I think that'd be great for your brand. Let me let me do some digging. Tell, at first I asked her what she wanted from the video and then she showed me some examples. And so then I did some research. I already had, you know, was connected with a few videographers, but I gave her three options. And I actually reached out to them and asked them for an estimate, just an estimate. Obviously it might not be exact, but what they would charge for something like this. So I got three prices, three different people, and I communicated this to her. And right away, there was there was one team of videographers who charged way too cheap, I thought. I mean, I was like, whoa. And I told them, I was like, oh, wow, that seems really low. Like, does that include like good audio, te an audio technician and good sound quality? And like, it was a red flag to me that they were only charging that much. And I, I, I obviously really loved their work. I only like I, the three people I recommended. I love their work. I had watched them before, but they um, I was just shocked that it was so much lower than the other two. And it actually turned me off and it, it made me a little like, oh, I don't know if I want to recommend them to my client because they're really low. Why would they charge that low? Uh, I need I want really good, high quality work. And so. I just passed on the prices to her and she actually chose, she went with one of my recommendations who was not the lowest. They were towards the higher end. Um, and she didn't choose the, the cheapest price. You know, I said, all, all three of these look good, but here's who I recommend. And, and here's kind of estimates they gave me. She, my client did not choose the cheapest one. She went with one of the higher ones. And I would have done the same thing if I was her. Cause I would have been like, Hmm, so they're charging 3000, they're charging 4,000. And they're going to only charge 1000 that seems like a little weird you know so i just want you to know that it's possible that you if you're if you're struggling to attract the right client and you feel like why am i not getting the clients that i really want to work with like how are these photographers getting these clients it could be that you're too cheap with that said you know like i said it's really important to feel in alignment with your pricing and what you're charging so it is possible that you know you're too high or too cheap so i just want you to keep that in mind and that um you could be undercharging i just wanted to bring that to the table um and you know you could be overcharging <laughs> you could be overcharging because you might be trying to charge a price that you're not there yet that's like the future you and like a year or two from now but you're a newbie brand photographer and you're trying to charge the the price that someone who's 
done 100 or 200 brand photo shoots charges. And that's also an issue. So you have to find your sweet spot when it comes to pricing. And I've told this story before, but you know, I started charging $200 a photo shoot. Um, that version of me three years ago when I was charging $200, like, yeah, that was not, that was not high enough to sustain a thriving business. However, was I ready to charge what I currently charge, $3,000? No. Like if I had tried to charge $3,000 three years ago when I was starting, there would have been a disconnect. Like I would not have attracted my ideal client. I would have felt out of alignment. Like who am I to charge this? And this doesn't feel right. And, and there would have just been a disconnect. But it took me time to feel like I was ready to charge kind of what I call my goal, my goal rate. My goal rate is actually 5,000. I actually um, want to charge 5,000 a shoot. I, I'm not there yet, but I will be there. I have no doubt I'll be there, but am I there right now? No, and that's okay. So we can have that goal of what we want to charge. And then we can start with what we feel comfortable and confident. Here's the key word, confident charging that we can deliver over deliver on. I mean, every time I charge my client, I pick a price where I feel like I'm going to blow their mind. I'm going to deliver way more value than this. And they're going to be thinking in their head, wow, Meg is like, too cheap. I can't believe all this value I got from working with her. And that's always my goal with every single client is actually to over deliver. Um, and so pick a number that feels good to you. Don't charge too cheap because then you're not going to attract good clients. <laughs> and um, what else did I want to talk about? Is this any of this resonating? Or you're like, no, Meg, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm not feeling this conversation. We should just stop it right now. Or do you want to hear the other three, three tips that I have? <laughs> um, so by the way, I want to talk about like what shifted for me. Like even, even recently I raised my price from 2,500 to 3,300. And even six months ago, I wouldn't have felt that I could charge 3,300. Like that would have felt out of alignment, but what shifted in these last six months I mean, one, supply and demand. I'm almost booked up for 2020. I probably have two spots left. That's it. Like for my comfort level of how many clients I can take on. So knowing that the supply and demand is up, like I'm very busy and I don't have a lot of spots left. That was one reason, thing I considered to raise my price. Another reason is all my clients have been super happy with their photos, really satisfied, posting them like crazy, like just really happy with their shoot and just raving after their photo shoot. So the fact that they're satisfied, they feel that it's worth it. That was another way I could justify, okay, it's time to bump my prices. Um, and I have a baby on the way. I'm going to be a mom in December and I'm not going to have as much time and I'm considering all these things and I want to have time with my children and still, you know, hit my goal salary every month. And so that was another thing I considered. And I've also been donating more and I've been able to donate more because I, I want more time to be able to serve other more people. And the way I'm able to do that is raise my price a little bit so I can give back to organizations I believe in. I can give them a free brand photo shoot every quarter and that feels really, really good. Um, and that was another motivator of why I raised my price recently. So a lot of things we can like mentally justify when we're raising our price. Part of it is the, the mental, the like logistical, tangible, like, well, hey, I'm in demand, I can't take on any more clients, I should probably raise my price, you know, but then there's also the non-logical side, which is just your, in your heart, just knowing when it's time, when you feel that disconnect, when you say yes to a client, and then instead of excitement, you feel like, oh, I have another client now, you know, that, that could be a sign if you're really busy, and you're kind of like almost, um, what's the word I'm looking for? you're a little bit, uh, can't think of the word right now. <laughs> Basically you're like, you're like, dang it, I have another shoe and you're almost like resentful. You're a little resentful t towards your clients there. I, I have been there where I was just so busy and I started getting this weird feeling when I was saying yes. And I was like, you know what? It's time to raise my price. That's why this isn't feeling right. That's why I'm not excited anymore because this is, I need to raise my price. So Lots of ways when, as far as like knowing when it's time to raise your price. Um, let's go to number three. The number three tip I have for you when it comes to pricing is stop assuming, making assumptions that your clients can't afford your price. 
I've, I've heard this from brand photographers, um, coaching that, you know, uh, I, I just, I'm nervous for tomorrow for this sales call because I want, I want to sell this package, but I just don't think she can afford it. I don't think he's in a place in his business. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. We're already going into sometimes the sales calls, making assumptions about people and who knows why that is maybe because of the, the job they do, or maybe because of just an energy you got from them, or maybe because you looked at their social media and you're making judgments about the person, or maybe it was something they said, maybe they said, and I've had this too, a client from the beginning say, yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking for this and that. And I, I mean, the biggest thing is just budget, you know, I'm on a budget, so I got to see if I can afford you. And sometimes when we hear that, we automatically think, oh, they're just looking for the lowest price, but it's not always true. And I know it's really hard not to treat that client differently when they tell you from the beginning, I'm on a budget, I really want to know your price. Because yeah, a lot of times they are just price shoppers, but sometimes they're not. Sometimes uh, you can still take them through your sales call process and you can you know, convert them over to someone that is has to work with you um, and you can show them the value. And you can build that connection to where even though they maybe had this number in their head of what their budget was, they're spending three or four times what they thought because they just love you and they realize this is perfect and this is what's going to take them to the next level. And a big thing I, I want us as photographers to stop doing this, making assumptions and making judgments that people can't afford us is because when we do that, we're not holding the space for that client to rise. Like we are catalysts. We don't just deliver photos. We create transformation in our clients. We give them confidence. We give them this new level of professionalism to their business. One second. Alexa, stop the timer. <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, we give them a new uh, you know, level of professionalism and confidence in themselves and um, authority. A new level of... Um, just success. We literally are transforming them from here's my little entrepreneur dream, what I want, and I know these photos, I need these, to I finally have photos I'm proud of. I'm excited to put myself out there. Oh my gosh, I'm getting more engagement than ever. Clients are being attracted to me left and right because I'm finally showing up. I'm finally putting myself out there. I am actually creating the business of my dreams. This is crazy. Like you guys, what we do is like, magical. It's not just photos. It's a transformation. And I don't know about you, but I think it's really absurd even to think about like judging a person and assuming they can't afford you and not holding that space for them to rise up to you. And what I mean by that is, you know, you'll get people who they can't afford a $3,000 shoot or a thousand dollar shoot, but, but they want to work with you so bad. And they want this entrepreneur dream to happen so bad for them. And they know these photos are going to help them. This is like one thing they need to, to move forward to the next step in their entrepreneur journey. They will find a way to pay the thousand dollars and maybe it's over four months, whatever it takes, but they will find a way. And even though they couldn't afford it, they will rise to the occasion of working with you and you, and they will show up. You know, whenever we pay something cheap or something we can afford and it's not that big of a deal, we don't really show up the same as when we make a huge investment that really stretches us. We're going to show up for that. I mean, we're going to put our all into it. We're going to take it really seriously. We are going to post those damn photos that we get if we're paying a lot of money for them, right? For our business and we're going to rise to the occasion. And so it's so beautiful when you can like hold that space for your client and you can say, Yes, it's a lot of money. I know that. Well, take some time to think about it, you know, but I would love to work with you and I can be flexible on payment, whatever you need. I really want to make this work. And then that you're holding that space for the client to rise up instead of just saying, okay, like, let me just draw my price. Let, let's just think of something you can't afford. Okay, let's just do this. No, like hold the space for your client to like become the best version of themselves. That's what we do. Um, <clears throat> And I just think about like, I think about for me, like if somebody had told me at the beginning of my business, um, when I really, really, like, all I wanted was to be a business owner. I had had a, uh, my first business failed, wasn't that successful. And so I tried again 
And I remember being an English teacher. And then I remember being a server, a waitress at a restaurant. And all I could think about when I was working my jobs, and I love teaching, I love the kids, but all I could think about is like, I can't wait to get off work. I can't wait for my 15 minute break so I can go learn more photography. So I can go edit these photos I took. So I can go work on my business. Like I just wanted my business to work so bad. And if somebody had told, held that space for me to rise and told me like, hey, I know this is a stretch for you financially, like I, I get it, um, but these photos like are gonna help, if, having photos that you love that are so beautiful and help you position your brand as a high-end brand and brings your social media together, your website, just everything, like that is gonna absolutely help you build your business. Like this is, this is gonna be a crucial step in you creating that dream life. Like, I don't know, you just can't put a price on it. Would I have paid like thousands of dollars? Like which if I knew that these photos were like such a key part in helping my business grow and I've experienced that magic, showing photos of myself and my own personal brand, how important they are, like, I mean, I can't, I can't put a price on that. I can't put a price on this transformation that we provide as brand photographers, like having my own business, having my own freedom. I could take the rest of the day off if I want today. I could go to the beach. Like I cannot put a price on that. I love what I do. I love my business. I love helping others build these businesses that they love. And that's priceless. Like you can't even, you can't even say that's worth 3000 or 5,000 or $5 million. It's I don't know, it's priceless to me. And so I just think about that. Um, and I, I really focus on selling the uh, the transformation that they're gonna receive. And, and, and the, I push my clients, you know, I push them. And I price myself in a way that's gonna challenge them and push them to rise up and show up on their brand photo shoot in a big way. I don't want to charge lower prices anymore. That's just, they're not gonna take very seriously. Like I want those clients who, who want to, who are in this, like a hundred percent committed, if that makes sense. So, <clears throat> okay. Number four. Okay. This is like an actual practical one for you people that are like, uh, can you tell me something like practical and a little more grounded that I can actually do to figure out my pricing? So here you go. Number four is know your numbers. Know your business numbers. You are the CEO, CFO, unless you have a different CFO you pay, but you are the chief financial officer of your business. You need to know your business numbers inside and out. And for me, um, I'm sure you've heard this term, like know your worth and then add tax. That is really important because I know most business owners, when we start out, we just don't think about that. You know, most business owners, when we start out, we think about making $100 an hour and we're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I can charge $100 an hour. But then we forget that, you know, up to 30% of that, 20 to 30% is just going to go to taxes. It's not even yours to keep. And then there's the expenses of running a business, softwares, you know, transaction fees, equipment rentals. And then there's all the other stuff. It's not just you showing up for an hour and making a hundred dollars. It's all the editing. It's the emails back and forth. It's sending the invoice. It's downloading the images, backing them up, you know, just so much that we do. So we need to account for every single minute of our time uh, when we're creating our offers. And um, that's why I created the brand pricing calculator. This is a part of my course, but it's a spreadsheet and you can create your own, but it's a spreadsheet where you, you create your package and offer based on exactly how much time you are actually spending on that full client experience. Everything from the phone calls to the emails, to the editing, to the travel time, to, you know, you got to figure all that out. You need to put 30 to 50% away for expenses and taxes. And then you figure out how much you're actually making per hour of your time. And you also need to know with this is knowing your numbers and write this down. If you're listening, make sure you know your dream salary, your dream salary. Like what is that number that you feel like you could with this amount of money, paying yourself this amount of money every single year, you could, you wouldn't be limited. 
right? You could travel as much as you want. You could take time off with your family. You could uh, save enough money to buy that home that you want, the car you want, the, the things that we want in life. You could have enough money to always buy organic food for you and your family or like pay a house cleaner a couple times a month since you don't love doing that and you can focus on what you do love. Like what is that number that you need for you and your family to provide for? and just have the number, like write it all out, really map it out every single dollar, even with mine, my vision. And this is part of your vision, you know, where you want your company and your business to grow, that bigger vision. My vision includes, I wanna be able to donate and give like $50,000 a year away to charities and causes I believe in. And that's part of my bigger vision. I'm not there yet, but I know the number I need to get there. And so knowing your numbers is so important and it starts with what you want and how much you wanna pay yourself. And then you have to add the expenses and then you have to add the tax. And then you have to see how much time you're really spending per client on that offer, you know, that full day shoot, that half day shoot, that one hour shoot, figure out your time per hour and make sure it's in alignment. Make sure it feels good after you do all these calculations um, that, you're feeling good about how much you're making per hour of your time. So yeah, <laughs> and I use my pricing calculator like spreadsheet every time I raise my prices, every time I create a new offer, I go and I plug it in and I'm like, is this in alignment? Am I slowly raising my hourly rate, my hourly goal? And here's the thing is you can have your dream hourly rate, right? Let's say your dream is to make 250K a year. And that will provide an amazing exact lifestyle you want for yourself, your business. Um, and then you reverse, ver, blah, <laughs> reverse engineer it and you realize, okay, I have to make $750 per hour of my time. I don't feel comfortable charging that right now. If it takes me five, if it takes me 10 hours for this brand photo shoot experience, that's $7,500. I don't, I don't really feel confident charging that. So that's okay. You don't have to charge that yet, but just knowing that like ultimate dream goal number is good. And then you can start with a newbie price. So what newbie price as a brand photographer, do I feel comfortable charging right now? And just always slowly raising and working towards that number. Um, that would be that would be my advice. But the, the biggest takeaway from that is just know your numbers and let me know in the comments. I don't know if I'll do more videos like this. Nobody's commenting. So I don't know if you guys like it. <laughs> um, okay. But know in the comments, uh, or what was I going to say? Oh, know your numbers, know your numbers, know your numbers. And let me know in the comments, if you're watching this on the replay, you can say hashtag replay, or let me know if, um, if you know exactly your hourly rate, how much you're actually making after taking out taxes, expenses, all the things for the business, subtracting that, and then how much time you're putting in for the full experience, divide that by the leftover and how much you're really making per hour. Do you know your hourly rate? Just say, yes, I know my hourly rate, or no, I don't, but I'm gonna figure it out. It's okay if you don't, because now you can go figure it out on what you're really making for that collection. Okay, the last tip I have for you on pricing is pay attention to the fear and raise your own value. Okay, what I wanted to talk about with this one is sometimes when we're afraid to charge what we're worth or afraid to raise our prices or that number just feels too big or we, we just don't believe that we can book a client at that price or we're going to be like able to close the deal sometimes it's legitimately like fear it's just like those little fear gremlins in your head talking saying you're not worthy saying that's a lot of money who are you to get that they're not gonna, all these little stories that we have around our money mindset sometimes it is that but sometimes the fear is not just a mindset shift that you need to make sometimes the fear is a red flag and it's telling you um Sometimes it's legit, the fear is legit. Sometimes it's telling you, hey, you're not ready to charge this yet. You're not ready. And that's okay, okay? That's okay. I know for me, I would rather, you know, have two clients at a price that feels really good and in alignment and that I do feel ready to charge 
then try to stretch myself and get this one client at this high end price that doesn't feel in alignment. And so if that's you, if, if you're starting to, if you kind of like tune in to like, why is this feeling so hard to charge this or ask for the money or get on a call or raise my price, um, tune in and is it just fear? You know, did you, do you know your numbers and you did all the calculations? Um, and you know that you're worthy of this per hour and, and that's not an issue. Like you're like hundred percent. Yes. Like I deserve that per hour of my time and my work is worthy or is it, um, because if, if it, if it's not that, if it's not just like the inner fear and the money mindset stuff, then it might be that you're not ready. Like you don't feel like you have the skills and experience to charge that yet. And that's okay too. Like when we're honest about, hey, like I really want to charge this. I know I can get there, but I don't feel ready yet. I need to work on my like client experience more. Like maybe I don't even have a brand questionnaire set up for clients, or maybe I don't even have like a great client experience yet, or I don't even have like my systems in place to charge that. Or honestly, like I don't feel confident with lighting in, in this situation that this client would be in. I don't really feel confident and with that kind of lighting and or i don't feel confident with posing with brand photo shoot posing yet to charge that so write it down like what is it dig into that fear and because it might be legit it might just be like you know what i just need to take a, a posing course i just need to take meg's confident brand photographer course to build my systems and my back end and have my client experience all dialed in to impress the client and then I will definitely feel worthy of that price. So sometimes it is that we need to like invest a little bit more into us before we can charge that. So pay attention. It's not always just that, oh, it's just my mindset and fear. No, maybe you need to do some work <laughs> on your client experience or your skills or your product. And I have this talk with myself all the time. I am not where I want to be. Um, I There's a lot of skills I feel like I still want to master and learn as a photographer in my editing, in my posing, in my lighting, all of it. So I'm always trying to work on getting better. And every time I take a new course, I get a new coach, I learn a new skill, I practice it and practice it and practice it until I master it. Then there's that shift that happens where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to charge more. Yeah, at this point, like I need to be charging more. And then there's, that's where that confidence is built. You know, you have to take action to build confidence. Confidence doesn't just, you don't just shift into confidence one day. Like confidence is built by little baby action steps over time that we do to really raise our own self-worth, our own value. And then we feel confident to charge that. We feel confident to call ourselves a brand photographer. We feel confident to ask for the money. We feel confident to say, no, you're not my, you're not really my, the right fit. So I don't think this is going to work out. Like it's, it just comes with experience over time and investing in yourself to feel, feel that confidence. Um, so just that, that was it. Just pay attention to the fear and work on, you know, focusing on raising your own value, your skills, increasing your skills, getting, you know, growing as a photographer, getting better, even like increasing your skills at communication with your clients, becoming a better communicator. Um, I think that's something for me that's a um, strength of mine is that I love talking to people. I can get along with anyone, especially one-on-one. -on -one. Like I love one-on-one -on -one work and I can really connect with the person. I don't feel uncomfortable. I, I can build a really deep connection. I ask deep questions. And for me, that comes naturally, but maybe it doesn't for you. Maybe you're really introverted. <laughs> so how can you work on that? You know, as a leader, as a business owner, um, being introverted can get in your way sometimes, you know, you want to be able to connect with your clients and you want to be able for, you know, to build that know, like, and trust factor. And guess what? You don't have to be introverted forever. You don't have to like in your business, you can put on a totally different hat. You can step into a totally different role. You can be the business owner who is, um, sorry, just spaced out. Cause I saw the time I got to go. Cause I'm meeting a client for lunch today. Got to go get our lunch. Um, but is this making sense? I hope this is making sense. Um, basically where I was going with that is that you can train yourself. You can learn new skills. There's a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People, the most incredible book by Dale Carnegie. 
I think is who wrote that. <laughs> and um, he teaches you how to become really likable. So people like you, he teaches you how to be more extroverted. He teaches you how to be friends with anybody and like instantly build that connection. So there's so many skills as business owners, photographers, leaders that we actually need to master that isn't just photography focused that we can build and we can learn. You know, it doesn't have to be that oh, I'm just introverted and they're just extroverted and it's easy for them and not for me. Bullshit. Like stop being a victim, do the work, put in the time and make the shift and, and build your confidence one thing at a time. And then you'll be able to charge just as much as not more than that photographer. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. I hope you got some takeaways. And if you're watching it, let me know what takeaways uh, were valuable for you. And if, if none were, just leave no comments and I won't even do any more videos like this because I only want to do these if they're valuable for you. And if they're not, then I don't want to do them. So let me know and have a great day. Bye.